Yesterday we had another staggering time from the Germans, 30.4 seconds, which had never been done before. But this is all about Russia on their home turf. Uh, can they come through? Poland again have got a, a team in the final, which this time you can actually say they have a team in the final, which is, <laughs> which is great. It uh, looks like the wind's eased off a little bit, but this could actually make it a little bit nicer for them to race with. And these are, well, Sebastian Juve was the world champion 2011, 2000, uh, 2010, 2011, but he's changed in partner. They always do that, so that's the uh, <laughs> says hello, hello to... Uh, uh, so here we have, uh, it's a new combination from last year, but they're both champions. Postuge Dajchenko, the Olympic champions, the last year's world champions. They had a bit of a wobble this year where they beat in the Milan uh, World Cup and they haven't really seemed to come back since then. Uh, we look in Serbia at the moment, uh, Grich and Novakovic, who look really, really good. These guys have won everything this season so far. Ronnie Rao and uh, Tom uh, Leibischer. Argentina, but maybe a bit of surprise that they actually come through uh, in such a good fast time. We've got Hungary here in line eight. Well, Hungary have had Sir so Molma and uh, Christoph Ban, and so here we go. Schofield and Johnny Schofield and Liam Heath. They've uh, come second and third at uh, World Championships and European Championships. So they've won the events before, in fact, and the Olympics of well, they were medalists. So it's it, it, it's. It, this is one of the big races uh, in Brandenburg in the Europeans uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was incredibly close. And this absolutely has to be the fastest race of the weekend. Well, can they break 30 seconds? We say the wind has well, dropped a bit yesterday. It was 30.4. Daichenko in the back. Uh, he was uh, in the in the in the Europeans. Postigo was also racing the 500s, which apparently didn't go down too well. But here we go. You and need, we're up. You need to have it in slow motion to see. Well, they've all got off to a good start. Normally, traditionally, the Russians have a bit of a slower rate from the others, but well, they're all flying Look at the moment. Look how close it is. <laughs> 150 meters to go and you'd expect the Russians to come through but they're not doing so at the moment it looks like the the squiggly boat which is in lane number six five of the Germans is coming through so it's lane number could be Serbia, Serbia and the Germans this would be a huge shock if Serbia could pull this and off Great Britain coming through a strong finish what have we got well that is a I big 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 upset again the Russians have gone completely quiet and Serbia. Serbia is celebrating. Yeah, that I think that was a clear one from Serbia. Well, before it was a case of Russia against Germany, but Serbia came in and spoiled the game. Look at the size of that guy. <laughs> well, Russia the Russians look a were little bit disappointed with that one. No, I don't blame them. Well, they were they were the Lisa Carrington of the uh, the 200 meters a couple of years ago, and mm. then this year the, the wheels have seemed to fall off a bit. They got some really close competition from a, an under 23 team, but for Serbia to come through, and for Germany not to because they've been extraordinarily good and they've won all the World Cups so far this year. Tom Leibniz has specifically concentrated on this. What's happened to Russia though? I I don't know. Look at them coming through there. It looked like they had a really strong race, but just that last little bit, they didn't quite have it. Well, it's, you could let a pin, you could hear a pin drop outside at the moment. Germany in second, and who do we have in third? I think that would be a very close call. Serbia. Gurich is 23 years old now, and Michev is... 21 years old and look at that what a great victory well they've timed it so well to come peak at the right time in the season well everyone else is disappointed the second and the third are disappointed who are they showing on the podium well they're showing Heath and Schofield from Great Britain It'd be nice to see some sort of confirmation Serbia, Germany, France, with Russia down in wow. sixth. Great Britain just out of the medals in uh, fourth, but uh, this, you, you can't hear a word. The whole people are completely silent. And 30.5 is uh, another staggeringly uh, fast time. Wow.
So France came through in lane number three from nowhere. They, uh, they've uh, switched teams from a couple of years ago. It's Sebastian Juve and Maxime Beaumont. Yeah, we didn't even mention them during the race, but uh, they came through and took that bronze. Well, two more races to go. Let's see what we can do. In the next race, it's going to be the C2... Yep, it's going to be the C2 men. Are they lining up yet? No, there's a bit of a gap, so we're probably going to have an award ceremony. Let's see where we are. Well, today has been... Well, we had Mark de Jong, who possibly was the favourite for Canada, so that's a great result, him winning the K1 200. The C1 200 for the men, that went against form. Uh, Yush Shaban, I suppose, is the Olympic champion, but he, he hasn't shown much since then. K1 200 uh, was always going to be Lisa Carrington, wasn't it? Mm, absolutely. Common force uh, 12 months ago, didn't make it onto the podium. The Brits just missed out by coming in fourth. And the Germans, who have been the dominant uh, team for the whole season and had the... Uh, the fastest time of all. It only came second, and uh, shoot, it's, uh, it's not what was written in the script. And it's Albert Woods, he uh, was giving out the gongs a few minutes ago, obviously enjoying himself, so he's back. Uh, uh, Albert, he's been a great servant for the sport, started off in Stalham probably 50 years ago and uh, kept going. And it's the French who take the yet another day for uh, Sebastian Juve, uh, just receiving the medal. He won the gold medal uh, twice in 2010, 2011, and with his partner um, Maxime Beaumont. They've been together now for the last year. And it shows they can go fast. Anna, Uber, Etienne, uh, Uber. They were in the K2 uh, 1000 and uh, a bit of a complication because they moved the ta start time forward, which they weren't informed, and so they really messed up their race. But here we go Ronnie Rauer and Tom Leibischer for Germany take the silver medal, which I'm sure they're not going to be happy with because they've been in blistering form all year, but it is a combination that works. And uh, Ronnie Rao, 20, 31 years young, Tom Leibich, I think 22. So there's uh, maybe a couple more years and there'll be a, a, a huge force of going forward to the Olympic Games. Gold medal for Serbia. It's a shock. They're very young. But they they won in style, to be fair. Guric, Novakovic. World champions in the K2 200 meters for 2014. And now we'll stay quiet for the national anthem of Serbia.
Gold medal for Serbia. They take the championship of the K2 200 meters. Germany have to settle for silver with France taking the bronze medal. We're coming to you live from Moscow. It's been a wonderful last two days of activity. We've seen lots and lots of, there's no world records in this sports because it depends on the obviously the viscosity and the temperature of the water and the wind direction and all sorts of other things. But they've, uh, we've had a stack full of world's fastest times ever, ever. And so it's uh, these, uh, the silver medalists here, Ronnie Rao and uh, Tom Labisha did a 30.4 yesterday, I believe, in the semi. They must have been exhausted because about an hour before they actually won the gold medal and looked completely exhausted after the winning of that in the KC2 1000 meters. And yesterday they won the silver medal in the C2 500. But here we go.